Okay, hello and welcome back. And that's right, it's time for another NAS comparison. This is not the first time that I have looked at the DS1522 Plus and the DS920 Plus, but today we are going to squarely focus on Plex Media Server and 4K Media. We're not going to look at 1080p, 720, nothing like that. We are looking at domestic class off the shelf 4K Media. This will range of about 15 or 16 megabits per second bitrate 4K, all the way up to uh, 50 and I think even 60 uh, frame uh, megabits per second bitrate HEVC IMAX Ultra HD 4K media. We're going to see how these two NASs perform. Why are we doing it? Well, several reasons. One, because we do like comparing these two NASs because they're very, very similar right now. The best two desktop options for uh, home users and prosumer uh, users right now. But but on top of that, there are questions that people have about the CPU architecture of the new generation from Synology, all arriving with an AMD embedded Ryzen dual core, the R1600 processor there, which although has a decent clock speed at 2.6 gigahertz, that could be burst up to uh, 3.1 gigahertz on both of its cores, and it is a four thread processor as well, it does not have embedded graphics on board, which does concern some, particularly when previous generations of this family, such as the 1520 and the DS920, arrived with quad-core Intel Celeron processors there, which although have a lower clock speed at 2.0 GHz that can be burst up to 2.7 GHz, it should be highlighted that that CPU there has embedded graphics. It has an onboard component specifically designed for handling graphics, I think up to 800 megahertz uh, uh, performance there on burst, but 350 to 400 megahertz graphical power by default. When does that come in? Well, both of these, as we, as we have tested in the past, can play back media at both 1080p and 4K. But the minute you do any kind of task that requires transcoding, that requires converting, such as the playback of HEVC media, or dealing with particularly high bitrate media, that is when CPUs that do not have embedded graphics on board or integrated graphics can often hit something of a wall. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at that wide gamut. 10 different kinds of specifically 4K media in different file formats, in different conversion methods, and in different bitrate and weight to see how each of these systems play them. So without further ado, let's make our way over to the results and see how these two fared playing the same media, how much CPU resources did they use, and ultimately, were they able to play them at all? Let's crack on with the results. Okay, so we begin our testing with a 12 megabits per second H.264 24 frames per second MP4 file. Now, I will say straight away, one of the main reasons we're comparing these two, of course, is because of embedded graphics. I mentioned it in the introduction, but it's worth highlighting again. There will be times when the Intel Celeron processor is going to be able to dig in and utilize that integrated graphics that it's got on board. Now, both of these are playing this file beautifully well with very little impact on the CPU there. You can see that the green line on the CPU bar for both of these NASs uh, represents Plex CPU utilization, and the red line underneath represents presents the overall system utilization. Now what that means is, is you're going to be able to tell the difference between when the CPU is being used for Plex and the host system. So it's going to be good to see if there's any interference from the NAS throughout these tests. But before we go any further, yep, both of them have played fine. Uh, it's an absolute draw, no difference between them. Both CPUs played it very well indeed. Let's move on to the next test. And this one is our Avengers Endgame trailer. This is an H.264, 40 megabits per second, 24 frames per second, MKV IMAX 4K Ultra HD file. What an introduction. Now, as you can see, both of them playing the file very, very well. You can ignore the early spike by the way, on the 1522 Plus, that is from other testing. Always look on the right-hand side of the CPU chart there. You can see both of them presented an early bump on CPU utilization, but despite the Intel Celeron having integrated graphics, we're seeing higher spikes there on the Synology system there. Now, this is because of the difference between the number of cores and the overall clock speed. Uh, the Intel there inside the 920 is a four core CPU, 
but it's 2.0 uh, that can be burst up to 2.7 whereas the Ryzen there even though it's just a dual core it can be it's 2.6 that can be burst to 3.1 and overall when it comes to raw CPU power in that test the Synology 1522 won by a hair's breadth now our next test is another trailer Black Panther Wakanda Forever this is an HEVC file uh, 10 bit 32 megabits per second MKV and this is where things get serious because now we're seeing what the impact of a conversion or transcoding would be between them now what that means is that file has had to have been adapted because of the lack of support of HEVC on the native player. Now, bear that in mind, if you are using uh, systems to watch your media that are tremendously powerful, they can sometimes do the conversion, do the transcoding, or you might be using hardware plans that have HEVC support. Regardless, if you don't have those options, you're forced to use the NAS's own hardware to commit the conversion due to the lack of an HEVC license. And as you can see in front of you, the result is that the 920 with the Celeron did the job tremendously well with very little CPU impact whereas the 1522 and its R1600 CPU absolutely died on its bum. Our next test is another trailer this is a Batman trailer switching back to H.264 this is an 8 bit 32 megabits per second MKV file here it's a 4k non ultra HD don't worry if there's a slight second difference between the playback that's all to do with pressing the button there in the network um, but as you can see there both of them running very very well indeed the spike is ever so slightly higher on that 920 and this again trades back to that idea of um, the clock speed of the CPU slightly being less important than the number of cores and that Ryzen just having a lot more horsepower in terms of uh, both efficiency and overall available clock power results in it you having less of an impact on CPU utilization they may well be using the exact same power but the fact still remains that because there's more under the bonnet on the Ryzen the dip is going to be smaller overall and between the two of them I'm not going to call a winner here because it's still very very similar but we can say that both systems played the file like a dream next up we're carrying on with h.264 with the terrible trailer for star wars rise of the skywalker a 4k trailer this is an h.264 8-bit file running at 32 megabits per second and it's an mkv but it does have a quite aggressive audio format dts hd master at 5.1 um, and again it can be switched up for ac3 if you choose uh, between the two of them we're seeing a slightly higher spike there on the 920 again that is comparative to the clock speed and don't worry too much about the slight drops in the frame rate of the actual playback of the file there as mentioned in other videos i found out post-production that this particular file that we were utilizing was a bit broken um, but there's still no denying that the uh, ds1522 plus definitely did the bigger and better job overall utilizing less hardware resources to play back this file because it's a native playback the Synology isn't really pulling from that embedded graphics too much pretty much still a draw but with a slight edge to the ds1522 our next test is again this is where things uh continue uh with h.264 but a higher bit rate this is uh the imax 4k ultra hd trailer for spider-man no way home a 32 megabits per second bit rate 8 bit file and it's an mkv both of them are playing it natively no transcoding no encoding needed again very similar results to what we saw earlier with the spike uh, being at least on the graph higher on that 920 with its Celeron processor versus that of that Ryzen that Ryzen still has plenty of horsepower under the bonnet to get the job done we're not going to worry too much about the memory by the way memory has very little impact on Plex Media Server as long as you've got about 2 to 4 gig and between the two of them still going to call it a draw and i think whether you're watching this video because of the 1522 or because this cpu is now inside uh, or at least uh, uh, claimed and uh, certified in some cases uh, to be inside the 723 and the 923 both of these have played the file very well i would call this an absolute solid success but things are about to change once again with our June trailer uh, it's an ultra hd 4k h.265 or hevc 10 bit hdr 16 megabits per second this represents a very aggressive file even the audio formats a little high as well and if you do take your 4k seriously 
there's a good chance you're going to have a lot of files in your possession that are of this caliber. And as you can see there, CPU utilization on that DS1522 Plus with the embedded Ryzen is hitting 100% immediately. Whereas the Synology is able, uh, sorry, the uh, DS920 with the Celeron is playing the file absolutely fine. Again, if you do have uh, a hardware player that you're watching this on that's powerful enough to handle the conversion or has in uh, native HEVC support, this won't be a problem. But that is a lot rarer than you might think. And ultimately, most users may find themselves reliant on conversion on the NAS side for Plex. And if you are one of those users, again, it will be a solid success for an Intel Celeron overall. Moving forward, we can carry on with the Wonder Woman trailer, switching back to H.264 there. This is an 8-bit eight, eight file, 16 megabits per second, but this time it's an MP4. I wanted to include some alternatives from standard MKV because, you know, MP4 can often be a uh, much uh, common uh, commoner download online or when it's included with Blu-rays as well. Uh, normally because of codec support of MKV not being quite as broad as MP4. Um, so a number of you that have owned Blu-rays may find a lot of your digital collection of media is MP4. And this MP4 file here, as we've seen many, many times before, has played sweet as a nut on both of these. A slightly higher spike there on the 920. Again, ignore the initial large spike. Uh, at the you know first 50% of the chart on the 1522, that's from a different test. But overall, between the two of them, playing it comparatively well, uh, comparatively the same, I should say, both playing the file very, very easily, not really much between them. Let's move on, unfortunately, to a slightly more aggressive test that I think may be another big decider. This is the Beauty of Taiwan test file, a 4K Ultra HD, just uh, 8 bit uh, and 29 megabits per second bit rate, but it is an HEVC and unfortunately we're going to see that similar story again. We're going to see that CPU spike going way, way, way high again. I'm well aware how repetitious I'm being, but if you have a, a multimedia environment that's powerful enough or has HEVC support for client side transcoding or not needed, uh, then you're going to be fine. But unless you know you have those things, what you're seeing here is the eventual result of playing uh, a, a 4K Ultra HD uh, HEVC file on your system. Again, the Celeron proving its bones and showing when it's needed that that, that integrated graphics get the job done. Uh, we're going to end things in just a moment with our last file, but I really want you to take on board the difference there between these two when it comes to integrated graphics on the server side, not the client side, the client being your telly. Now, our final file it's called Roast Duck. It does a 4K Ultra HD file here, and this is an HEVC file, 8 bit again, but this time a 60 megabits per second file. This is the highest bit rate MKV on our lineup. And this is when uh, that bit rate really shows its, uh, its colors because the bit rate is letting you know just how much data per second is moving. And the time difference on playback, the slowdown that's happening on that 1522, as it's continuously needing to rebuffer, and that CPU just being maxed out to the nines, just shows you that the 1522 is really only going to be an option. And this goes for any NAS, by the way, that's got this Ryzen R16 CPU, um, cough, the DS93 and 723. If you're going to go for a NAS with this CPU, you're going to have to have client side transcoding or at least a uh, support on the client side of um, HEVC so make sure you've got that but let's go to our results and sort of summarize everything we've learned today across these two because they're both great NASs let's face it given that there's two years of release difference between them there's a lot more going for them than you would think. Um, again, the DS920, thanks to that Intel seller on there, not only was able to keep up with the more powerful, newer and more efficient Ryzen on native playback, but when it came to when those conversions were needed, when it came to those higher bit rates, it could get the job done. Now, that, that, that's nothing against the 1522 Plus and that Ryzen processor there, the R1600. Despite its lack of integrated graphics, it did a fantastic job of playing those files. It did increase as the file sizes got higher, but as long as you're reliant on native playback or 
your destination client hardware multimedia device from you know a multimedia streaming box and more can handle and take the load of the HEVC transcode you should be fine but overall both of these NASs are still great and I really look forward to seeing this CPU the R1600 compared against more and more of both the old and new gen processors arriving in NAS if you're interested in buying a 4k NAS between these two I probably slightly recommend the 920 a bit more but the 1522 has still proven it's worth quite significantly and I would still recommend it um, if you know you have got hold of it for a 4k plex media server but between the two of them the 920 just had the edge at least on the hardware side from the server thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video i know it's a bit techy and boring but a lot of you that are considering spending hundreds if not thousands of pounds on a plex media server these things are important so i hope i helped at least one person make the right buying decision for their 4k plex media server nas if you want to learn more there are links in the description to other tests as well as the individual reviews for these nas and where to get hold of them if you're already thinking about buying this NAS from Amazon, why not use the links in the description? It won't cost you anything extra. And as an Amazon associate, we get a kickback, some of that money to help us carry on with what we do. If you want to learn more, click subscribe as we cover this subject more and more throughout 2022 and 2023. And click like if you've enjoyed the video because it really helps us understand what we're doing right and wrong. Uh, if you need free advice or guidance on the right solution, you can always use the free advice section linked in the description or the community forum, Ask NAS Compares, both linked in the description. I will see you next time.